Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I want to talk about a keyword known as the struct. So let's go ahead and see what it is. So if I go ahead to CPP reference and search struct, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this second link here so we can learn about the keyword struct. And I'll go ahead and okay, click on the first thing here and hmm, I see class here. Well, you might be wondering why I'm inserting structs into the middle of our C++ series where I've been talking about classes. And well, classes and structs are two ways to define user-defined types. So which should we use? Well, this has actually been something that's been bothering me, but I haven't been able to do yet in the series until I teach you about structs. And the reality is when using class or struct, and I'll zoom in on this, the keywords are identical except for one little detail, and that is the member access of the member functions and the member variables here as described. So perhaps it's easiest to just go ahead and show you what this means. The default access for classes is private and the default access for struct is everything is public. So let me go ahead to our vector data structure here. I'm going to make this a struct. I don't need to make things uh, public and I can just recompile this code and rerun it and it'll work just fine. So here's my new user defined type vector three. I've got a constructor, three member variables that are publicly available. Here's the actual implementation of that constructor with a member initializer list setting everything to zero and then some helper functions here in our main to do some operator overloading so I can print things out nicely. My vector one here from this uh, right here. Okay, so that's really all the difference between a struct and a class. So let me go ahead and change this back to a class. And if I try to recompile this, it's going to give me a bunch of errors and say, hey, everything is private, starting with my constructor. So you can't construct an object here as I'm trying to do at line 11. It's private. We can't see it uh, anywhere. So that's the only difference here. And you might be asking, well, Mike, why do these two things exist? Why did they do this to confuse us? Well, part of it is really historical. You see, C++ builds on top of the C programming language. And the C programming language had the keyword struct. So in a sense, we had to keep it in. And in C, when we use the word struct here, so we'd often write things like struct. Maybe we would have vector 3f like this. And we would have our float x, y, and z here. So let me just make here some you know, C code. And the idea here with this code here in C is that we couldn't have any member functions. We didn't really have any notion of constructors here, um, although sometimes people would define them as function pointers and so on, but none of that existed. We just had fields here with data. So C++, since it was built on top of C, had to keep the word struct so that a lot of the code could be compatible. But the only, again, functional difference is the default member access here, structs making things public. So why or how should we use this keyword or how do we decide? Well, again, one way we can decide is if we want things to be publicly available, such as this vector 3f, where often we just want to be able to access x, y, and z directly without trying to write a bunch of member functions to get or set these values. We just don't have to do that. We can instead just go uh, into our code, for example, and just do my vector one dot x equals 72.3 uh, or something like that. And I can recompile this, rerun it, and we can directly see 72.3 has been set here. Okay. so. Why, again, might we otherwise use struct? Well, depending on which company you're working on or what code style guidelines you want to adopt, oftentimes people will use structs and try to preserve what it meant in C. Again, that's this idea of a user-defined type just being something that's a collection of member variables or just these individual fields here. So that's how I tend to use structs in general so I can differentiate and sort of signal to folks who are using my code that, hey, this should be a real simple type. Don't add a lot of stuff into it. It's just really meant to collect three variables, x, y, and z. 
All right, so that's the sort of difference between struct and class in C++, and it truly is as simple as that. Historically, we've had to keep the keyword, but C++ then differentiates a little bit between the um, mem default access being public for structs and private for classes being a little bit more secure and conservative with class, making everything private. And by convention, you'll often see in code bases, folks use struct for plain old data types representing the C form or these pod types just holding member variables. Now, again, you might find different style guidelines elsewhere or a company that you work at might just always default to one or the other, but these are just some things to keep in mind and now you know the difference. All right, folks, so now that you know the difference, you can ace your programming interviews and if you found this useful, you can go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll go ahead and jump into some more cool stuff in the next lesson. See you soon.